Hi everyone, this is Dr. Derek Ong, and this video tutorial, I'm going to uh, share with you what direct marketing is and how you can use RFM analysis to analyze direct marketing. So, first off, what am I going to cover in this video tutorial? I'm going to cover and explain to you what is direct marketing. I'm going to also give you a little bit about what are the components of direct marketing and why it works so well. Um, the contrast to direct marketing, I'm going to be explaining to you um, uh, RFM analysis. What is it? Why do we need to do it? And how it is done properly? And I'm going to then simulate an RFM analysis on SPSS for you to look at the application. Now, the next thing I do is I'm going to talk to you about first, what is direct marketing? See, direct marketing was uh, a form, it's a form of communication, communicating an offer um, by the organizations to, to directly communicate a pre, to a pre-selected bunch of customers and supply a method for a direct response. So in marketing, this is usually what we call as direct response marketing. Now, it was coined by um, this guy over here, yeah. This, this this guy, this guy, yeah. His name is Lester Wonderman, and he was the founder of Wonderman Recorder and Klein, and he was the one who coined the direct marketing um, term in 1958. So what are the components of direct marketing? Firstly, you need to find an engagement of customers, which means that it is a pure engagement of just a pre-selected number of customers. Then you have to get them for a specific call to action so that direct marketing can happen. And there must be a means of tracking this response uh, from those pre-selected customers. Now, in contrast to direct marketing, it is like uh, general advertising, which means you generalize, uh, generally advertise to the, mass, uh, uh, the, 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 the masses. So if you look at a billboard, for example, uh, that promotes a brand or concept or product awareness. Uh, while it is seen by the customer, however, it does not call for a specific response. That means you don't get the customers to do anything. And therefore, uh, because there's no specific response, it's very difficult for it to be measured. Now, marketeers then, uh, because of this, would not know exactly how effective the billboard was or how many people are actually thinking about the and buying uh, the product because of the billboard. So they don't know how effective their marketing was. So in direct marketing, there must be a call to action, which means that direct marketing, because of there is that specific call to action, either by mailing back or a, a, a mail or, or response to a coupon or, or, or just clicking on a website, uh, Marketeers then will know exactly how many people responded to the direct marketing effort. Now, one of the best ways to do direct marketing or to target direct marketing is to do RFM segmentation because it's a great way to identify the group of customers for any special treatment you want them to do. Maybe it could be your best buyers, maybe it could be potential churners, or maybe it could be uh, just new p uh, segment of the market which you would like to get to. So, what is RFM in general? So, RFM really stands for Recency, Frequency, and Monetary. RFM. It allows marketeers to target specific clusters of customers with communications that are much more relevant uh, to their particular behavior. So it kind of really targets uh, the customer's relevant behavior. And this generates higher rates of response plus increased loyalty and customer lifetime value. So why do we do RFM? Well, RFM utilizes objective numerical skills. And this objective numerical skills yield a concise and informative high level uh, depiction of the customers, right? It is rather simple uh, because marketers can use it effectively without the need for data scientists or even very sophisticated software. And 
it is intuitive. The output of this segmentation is uh, method is so easy to understand and so easy to interpret, which you're going to see in the simulation later on. Now, I'm going to break down the RFM for you and explain to you what exactly RFM is in more uh, deeper context. So let's begin with recency. Recency basically means um, how much time elapsed since the customer's last activity or maybe at the transaction with the brand. Um, it could also mean that the activity could be a purchase, uh, although there may be variations or sometimes used and maybe say the last visit to a website or the last use of a mobile app. Now, in most cases, the more recently a customer has interacted or transacted with the brand, then it is more likely that the customer will be responsive to the communications from the direct marketing or from the brand. Next, let's look at frequency. Now, frequency means how often a customer has transacted or interacted with the brand during a particular period of time. Now, it is clearly customers with frequent activities yeah, with the brand are definitely going to be more engaged and they are probably going to be the more loyal customers and customers who, uh, if compared to customers that rarely engage with the brand. Of course, one-time only customers are a particularly different class on their own. They may be high purchasers, but we're going to get to that later on. All right. Next, we're going to look into monetary. So monetary is also referred to as what we call as the monetary value. It reflects on how much the customer has spent monetary wise with the brand during a particular period of time. And uh, big spenders could should easily be treated differently than the customers who spend little. Yeah, we want them to be our favorite goal customers because they spend so much. And looking at monetary divided by frequency, it indicates kind of like the average purchase amount. Uh, an important secondary factor that we should consider when we segment these customers. So after looking at RF, now I'm just going to teach, uh, explain to you what are some of the four steps to do RFM. Firstly, we need to build an RFM model. Next, we need to divide the customers into tiered groups using the RFM scoring. And then we're going to target the communication based on these tiered groups. And based on the target, we're going to position our message and our strategy to the different type of tiered uh, segments that we have. So let's start with the first one. Build an RFM model. Now, we need to assign recency, frequency, and monetary values to each of our customers because the raw data for doing this uh, should be readily available in the company's CRM, uh, customer relationship, uh, or transactional databases, and it can be compiled in a spreadsheet or any of the databases. So as I mentioned, recency, simply the amount of time the customer's most recent transaction. Most businesses use days, though some customers, although it might make sense to use months, uh, weeks, or even in some cases, if you're doing a high frequency website, you might want to look at hours instead. Frequency is also the total number of transactions uh, made by the customer. And this is during a defined period of time. Monetary is the total amount the customer has spent across all the transactions, or it could be per their latest transaction as well. Right. Step two, we want to divide the customer into tiered groups. Now, this means we divide the customer list into tiered groups of each of the three dimensions, R, F, and M. SPSS helps you to divide this straight away automatically into five tiers of each dimension. Now, have a note here to know that other software that you can choose less tiers but try not to have to less, no less than three because when you have less than three, it's very difficult for you to see the tiering, okay? So if you have five, 
for each of the three tiers, you will get five times five times five segments, which means you get 125 distinct customer segments, which looks something like this. So in recency, uh, the one with tier one is least recent, and the one in tier five is most recent. Frequency, the one in tier one probably only has one direct uh, transaction, whereas the one in tier five is most uh, frequent. Monetary, the one in tier one is the lowest spent, and the one in tier five is the highest spent. Now, the third thing you gotta do is target your communication. Marketers could should assemble group of customers most relevant to their particular business goals and retention objectives. So what does this mean? So for example, if let's say you get a customer of let's say 555, now this group consists of those customers who are found in tier five, uh, recency R5, uh, F5, and M5, which means that they have transacted recently, do so often, and spend more than any customers. Now these are what we call your best customers. What about some of the customers who are new, but they are high spending? Probably they could be uh, 525 or 524. Now this group consists of customers who transacted only once, but are very recently, uh, but very recently, but they also spend a lot during that recent transaction. So you might want to be thinking about high spending new customers. Then you might even have a group that is the lowest spending, but active loyal customers, uh, which are a group that consists of customers uh, who transacted recently, but they do so very often, although they spend the least amount, but you still want to keep them. Then, of course, there are the ones that are high churners, your churn best customers. Now, these people have transactions frequently uh, quite a lot, but it has been a long time since they have uh, last transacted. And it could be the customers who probably are not spending enough. Okay, so you have these four. From these four goes to step four, where you position your message and strategy. Focus on the behavioral aspects from those uh, target, and then communicate with the customers in a much more effective manner. I'll give you some examples based on the four that we just saw. Maybe for your best customers, you want to communicate and make them feel like they are so valued, they're so appreciated, uh, because they generate a deposit a disproportionately high percentage of the overall revenue for you guys. Um, and thus, it puts them in the higher focus. So you should be keeping them in, uh, happy and making them as a top priority. Now, further analyzing their individual preferences and affinities will provide you additional opportunities for even more personalized messaging. What about the high spending new customers? It's always good to be careful. Uh, you want to incubate your new customers, but because these are new customers and they spend a lot on their post purchase, you want to try and encourage them to even spend more because this is important. Like with your best customer group, again, it is important to make them feel valued and appreciated and give them the terrific incentives to continue interacting with the brand. For the lowest spending uh, active loyal customers, however, these are repeat customers who are active and loyal, but they are going low spenders. Marketers should create campaigns for this group and make them feel valued, incentivize them to increase their spend levels. Um, I think as loyal customers, it is also pays to reward them with special offers so that they keep coming back. And if they spread the word around, then the brand be, uh, becomes more famous, you know, so they become your advocates in the long run. Now, your churn best customers might be a problem though, but at least when you know who these churn best customers are, they are valuable customers who stopped transacting long time ago. So, although it may be challenging to re-engage these churn customers, but the high value of these customers uh, should be um, should be one thing that you should try and get them back in. Now, just again, like with the best customer group, maybe 
give them something that's specific to their preferences, something that you will be able to find from your transaction data. So different segment of customers, you should always think about different ways of engaging them. And RFM is a quick way of looking at this segmentation. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate for you uh, RFM on two types of uh, databases. One is a transactional data and the other one is customer data because SPSS can handle both. Now, transactional data, if you notice, has transactional records and that's why it's higher in terms of the number of records. There's 10,000 records for this one uh, example. And you notice that they always have a transaction ID and a date of transaction. Whereas for customer data, each customer may have uh, repeated transactions and therefore they will have uniquely identified ID for their customers instead. So I have put those transactions together, uh, eliminating the same customer. So each customer I have uh, identified what is their transaction count and the total amount of transactions that they have made. So the customer data here is about 904 records. Okay, right. Next, what do we do for transaction and customer data? Now, essentially to do RFM in SPSS is the same. I will simulate it, but I'm just gonna explain it to you a little bit here. Firstly, you need to go to direct marketing and you need to choose the technique. Now, this is only for the latest SPSS uh, 23 version onwards that has this insight. Then look at under, uh, because direct marketing is a, a, a setting insight. So choose that technique and you notice that you need to look at the RFM uh, box. And this RFM box will show you uh, the, the RFM uh, uh, analysis uh, button. So click on this one. Now, you got to then look at what data you're actually analyzing. Are you analyzing customer data or are you analyzing transaction data? And I'll tell you why. Because transaction date value and customer identifier are the fields that you need to put in for transaction data, if you can see here. However, if you note for customer data, it requires transaction date or interval, number of transactions, and the total number of customer identified, which is where you saw previous slides, the two different data sets. Now, I'm going to simulate for you in SPSS just to show you what I mean. Okay, so I'm going to simulate for you how to do RFM very, very quickly on transaction data. So this is my transaction data, as I showed you just now, the transaction ID, transaction uh, date of transaction, value, and payment method. So I'm going to go to direct marketing, choose the technique, help identify my best context, which is RFM analysis. Be very clear that this is transaction data that you're doing. Continue. Uh, go to variables. Make sure sorry, make sure that you put in the transaction date, the transaction amount, which is also a transaction value, and you got to know whether this is transaction uh, minimum, maximum, median, or just the total. But since this is transaction data, then it's definitely just the transaction data itself. Customer identifier would be the uh, identification of customers through the uh, ID. So you want to uh, know how do you identify the customers so that the payments would be the best the way to look forward. Okay, then in terms of binning, as I mentioned just now, you can set the different number of bins, but usually I will say uh, assign the same bins for recency, frequency and monetary. In terms of save, I usually would like to create a new data set. 
right? And I'll show you the uh, re uh, result after this. But make sure that you save everything so that you have the same amount of data that you get later on. Or you can write to a new data file if you want to. And in terms of output, usually what I'll do is I like to click on everything, whether it's the bin data or the unbin data, so that I get to see a variety of outputs. Once I press OK, this will be the new data set that is created. And this will be the output that you see. And I'm going to explain this output one by one uh, uh, in great detail. All right. So after uh, doing your RFM analysis on SPSS, you will notice that in your data set, you will get these three columns, the recency score, the uh, frequency score, and the monetary score. And if you put all the three numbers together, they will also give you another column called the RFM score. This RFM score is likened to the score that you decide and segment um, from your step three uh, targeting and the step four in terms of positioning your message later on. So you can do a find of those customers that fall into a certain type of segment and you can just create a communication only for those uh, uh, customers that fall into those segments. Okay. Now, there are other, some other a um, uh, what do you call this a uh, uh, result that I want you to see. So firstly is the chart of bin counts. Now basically what this chart of bin counts is that it shows you the bin distribution for the selected uh, binning method, whether it is uh, five or three or four, it depends. Now each bar would represent the number of cases that will be assigned to each of the combined RFM scores. Although sometimes typically you want a fairly uh, even distribution with all or most of the bars roughly on the same height, uh, a certain amount of variance should be expected because uh, when using the default binning method that is assigned, uh, it will tie its values to the same bin. Now, extreme fluctuations in the bin distribution and or many empty bins, yeah, if you see some, <clears throat> may indicate that you should try another binning method, which means either in, uh, uh, reduce the binning or maybe increase the binning. Uh, because fewer bins uh, or uh, random assignment of your ties uh, and reconsider these bins for the suitability of the RFM analysis that you have in your data set. Okay, the next uh, output that you want to see would be the uh, table of bin contents. Now, uh, basically what you see here is a um, a uh, tree by tree table yeah, uh, that shows you the information of the chart of bin counts and it is expected that you will be expressed in the form of table like this with bin counts in each cell so you can see uh, which uh, frequency one uh, how many in monetary score one and also in terms of its recency count as well so you can see by one by one, three, uh, three, uh, five times five times five uh, tables. So this is a very, very good table to see who falls into which combination of the numbers. Now, this is an interesting one. The heat map of the monetary value by recency and frequency. Now, what this shows is uh, the monetary distribution uh, showing the average monetary value for categories defined by the recency and the frequency. Now, what this means is that darker areas, like on the top uh, right-hand corner, if you see here, uh, indicates that there's a higher average monetary value, okay? Histograms, uh, which is the, the next thing you see uh, in terms of your output, it will show you the relative distribution of values for the uh, variables calculating the RFM scores. Okay, uh, it is not unusual for your histograms to indicate a uh, somewhat skewed distribution. If you can see, there are some skewed distribution here, um, because rather than a normal or symmetrical distribution, it's like like your recency, you see a skewed monetary, you also see a skewed. So the horizontal axis will show you. Uh, um, the ordering from low values to uh, uh, on the left 
to the high values on the right. So for each of the graphs, this is what it shows you in terms of horizontal. And with recent C, however, now this one, take note, uh, the interpretation of the recency is very different because it depends on the type of recency data that you put in. So for example, if let's say you put dates, uh, the bars on the left then will represent the values which are further in the past, okay? A less recent date has a lower value than the more recent date, okay? And uh, if it's time intervals that you're putting in, then the bars on the left would represent more recent values instead, because the smaller the time uh, uh, interval, then the more recent the transaction would be, correct? Mm. The last thing I want you to see on your results will be the scatter plot of the pairs of variables, which you see the scatter plot between uh, the three uh, different variables. These are the relationship between the RFM scores. And it is most common to see noticeable linear groupings on the frequency scale because frequency often represents a relative small range of discrete values. So I'll give you an example. For example, if let's say you have a total number of transactions that does not exceed 15, which means then you only have 15 points on the frequency value. That's only 15 possible values. Okay. The interpretation of the recency axis depends on the type of the recency measure. Again, whether it is date or time interval. So if it's date interval, the points closer to the origin represents dates further from the past. And for the time intervals, the points closer to the origin represents more recent values. So you've got to really decide whether are you going to use dates or are you going to use time intervals. Now, in order for me to finish off this video tutorial, I need to tell you a little bit about uh, some caveats that you might need to know about the RFM segmentation and also the uh, RFM model. See, the RFM model is a very straightforward and powerful method uh, for customer satisfaction, segmentation, sorry. Uh, but um, it only looks at the three specific factors, which is recency, monetary, and uh, uh, frequency, uh, recency, frequency, and monetary. Although they are very important factors, but marketers may tend to think that you may have left out other uh, important variables, maybe like prior purchase, maybe like prior campaign responses, or even demographic details for that sense. So this is basically just one caveat. Another thing you might need to know that this is a historical method, which means that it looks into past customer behavior and may or may not be accurately indicating future responses or future activities or preferences or even purchases. So what this means is you might need to use more advanced customer segmentation methods, which uh, if you follow this video series, you can look into it. Uh, there is also the uh, cluster analysis. There's also the uh, decision tree analysis, also the logistic regression. Um, for you to do more high level prediction and for you to do more accurate prediction of customer behavior. So. That is all I need to tell you a little bit uh, a bit about the uh, direct marketing and RFM. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much.